Hey guys, welcome to part two of our GraphQL React Apollo series. In the first video, we created our GraphQL server, which uh, interfaces with the SpaceX REST API in order to get us some data to work with. So we created you know, our schema, we created our root query, we can make queries through graphical, but now we want to actually add a front end to this application. Uh, but before I do anything, before I set up React, I just want to initialize a Git repository. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just say Git init. Okay, make sure you, if you're going to do this along with me, make sure you have Git installed. Um, and you may have been making commits all along. I probably should have made a few um, earlier, but it's fine. So I'm going to say Git. Uh, let's do add. Actually, before I do that, I just want to create a file called dot git ignore. Okay, so this git ignore file, basically anything that I don't want to be committed, uh, I want to put in here. So I'm going to put my node underscore modules folder. And then I also don't want to commit the client. Okay, which is going to be where our, our React app sits. And the reason I don't want to do that is because we're going to build out our React application into our public folder of our server when we get ready for deployment. Okay, so um, if I decide to do deployment, so let's save this. And now we can go ahead and finish up here and just say git add. I'm going to add all and I'm going to git commit. Dash M and put a comment in here. I'm just going to say created um, GraphQL server. All right, good. So now that that's done, let's go ahead and install React. So we're going to use create React app. I don't have it installed globally, so I'm going to use NPX and say create dash react dash app. And I want to put it in a folder called client. Okay, and we're using uh, create react app version 2.0, which was released a, about a month ago or so, I believe. So as you can see, it's creating a folder called client. This is where uh, we'll be able to run our dev server, our react dev server and stuff like that. Uh, what I want to do, though, is install something called concurrently. And the reason for that is because I don't want to have to run Uh, one command to run our back end server at port 5000 and our front end server at 3000. I don't want to have to do that. I want to just have one single command that will run both the front and the back end. So that's what concurrently is used for. Okay, so we are going to install that. Okay, so that's all set. And if you look in client, you can see we have our just our standard react application. And let's clear this up. And before I get into React, like I said, I want to install concurrently. So let's say npm install concurrently. And if you've taken my Mernstack front to back course, then you probably have dealt with this before. All right. So now that we have that installed, let's go to our our servers. Our server is the root. Okay, so where server JS is and our schema, all that stuff. Let's go to that package.json file and let's create another script here called client. Okay, so to run our client, we want to run npm start from within the client folder, right? That's how you run a, a when you use create react app and you want to run the dev server on 3000, you do npm start, right? So we want to do npm start and to run that in the client folder, we just want to attach dash dash prefix and then client. So that will run it in the client folder. Now, as it is now, we could do um, NPM run server and NPM run client and run both the front and the back end. But like I said, I want to do just one command. That's where concurrently comes in. So I'm going to have a script called dev. Okay, so in dev, we want to run concurrently. And we actually need to use double quotes here. So we need to escape. We need to go like that with a uh, backslash and do NPM run server. So that will take care of running the server. Let's put another backslash quote and then a space and another backslash backslash quote. And then we want to run our client. So npm run client. Okay, another backslash quote. So it should look just like this. Okay, now let's save this. 
and let's go ahead and in our terminal we're going to run npm run dev and now this should run both so you can see it started 5000 now it's starting 3000 which is the react app and it's going to open it up in the browser okay so if i go back to vs code you can see 3000 is running 5000 also running if i wanted to use graphical right now i could i could go to local host um, 5000 graphql and you can see my servers running i can query my data and that's that all right so now let's head back to vs code close that up and now we're going to be working in our client folder okay so this is our react application so in source let's um So let's clean up a couple things in the app CSS. I'm just going to get rid of everything. I'm going to keep the file, but just get rid of all the styling. I'm going to get rid of this logo SVG. Oops, we're actually going to use a PNG file for our logo, which is the SpaceX logo. We'll delete that in our app JS. We're going to get rid of the reference to the logo and we're going to get rid of the header. So basically everything within this div we're going to get rid of. get rid of that and we'll just put an h1 for now and let's just say uh spacex and save okay so now everything should be working good now as far as the styling like i said we're going to use bootstrap but we're going to use a, a custom theme from bootswatch so i'm going to go to bootswatch.com and i'm going to use the cyborg right here this theme if you want to use something different you can if i go to download it'll give me the file now you could download this and install and you know save it locally but i'm just going to grab the link here and use that so i'm going to copy that and if for some reason it doesn't work if you're watching this you know later on just you can just use regular bootstrap all the classes and everything are obviously the same so um we're just going to go to public index.html and i'm going to get rid of these comments here and put in a link and just paste in that that bootswatch link to the cyborg theme okay you can get rid of these comments and then i'm going to change the title here to spacex uh launches and save okay so we'll close that up if we take a look you can see that now we're using the cyborg theme Now we're, we're going to use the SpaceX logo if you want you can search for a space I think I search for s- let me just see uh I and I know a lot of you don't care about the UI and stuff like that but I like to build something that looks somewhat decent I use this logo but I did crop it to like that uh not you know not as as big as tall um So you can go to the repository and you can get the exact image I used or you can crop it yourself or you can not use an image at all it's up to you. But I'm going to go to let's see this is the current project I'm going to go to client and source and I'm just going to bring over the logo. Okay, so I'm going to paste that in there. And then let's see we can close that up. Let's go back to our app.js. You can see I brought the logo PNG in. Now I need to just import it. So I'm going to say import logo from dot slash logo dot PNG. And this is going to go, you know what, we'll just replace the H1 with it. So we'll put an image tag. Source is actually going to be logo. That's what we brought it in as. We'll say SpaceX for the alt. And I do want to add some styling. So I'm going to say style. Make sure you use two uh curly braces for styling. I'm just going to give it a width of 300 and let's do display block and let's do margin auto just to push it in the middle. Save that and there we go. Cool. So now let's uh let's start to deal with Apollo. All right. Now we're going to have a couple different components. So I'll create uh inside of our client source, I'll create a folder called components and we're going to first deal with a component called launches. Okay? So let's create launches.js. Now, 
in order to deal with Apollo, we need to install a few things. So if we go to the Apollo website, I think it's Apollo graph QL dot com. I don't know. And I didn't spell Apollo, right? Let's just search for a Apollo client. Okay, so yeah, it's actually yeah, Apollo graph QL dot com. Just to make sure you spell it right. And then we're in doc slash react. So if we go to see essentials over here on the left essentials and then get started, it's going to tell us what we need to install. So we need three things. We need Apollo boost, which is the package containing everything you need to set up the Apollo client. This is basically separate from react and then react Apollo is the view layer integration for react. So it brings the two together. It's kind of like the react redux. package if you've ever used Redux because Redux is a separate thing from React, but then you have the React Redux package that binds them together. And that's kind of what this does. And then GraphQL is so we can parse our queries. So we need these three things. So we could just copy this. We don't actually need the dash dash save anymore. Um, and I'm just going to let my server run and just open up a new terminal. Okay, we'll go ahead. And, whoop, I almost made a big mistake and I almost installed it on my server. So we need to CD into client. Make sure you do that and then go ahead and run it. Okay, so once it's installed, it should be in the package.json of your client folder, not your server. So it should show up in here. Yep, there we go. Okay, so now that that stuff is installed, let's um, in our app.js. Let's bring in what we need to bring in from Apollo. Okay, so from both Apollo Boost and React Apollo. So what we need from Apollo Boost is the client itself. So we're going to say Apollo client and we want to bring that in from Apollo dash boost. Okay, and then we also want to bring in our provider. So we want to say import Apollo provider. Actually, this should be in um, curly braces. So Apollo provider is actually from react Apollo. So this works similar to Redux. If you've used Redux before, you know that you have a provider and you wrap your your main component in it or your your app J your app component with it and you pass in your store. Well, in our case, we wrap the we wrap it in the provider and we pass in our client. So we need to create a client. So we'll say new Apollo client and we just want to pass in an object with one property here of URI. Okay, so our URI is going to be HTTP and we can add a proxy later before we if we're going to deploy. But uh, for now, we're just going to do HTTP and let's say local host port 5000 and we want to make sure we hit that GraphQL route. Because remember, in our server, we have one endpoint of GraphQL and that's what we want to hit. And then we can deal with anything that's in the schema. So now that we have our client, let's go down here and let's wrap everything in the return in our Apollo provider and pass in the client that we just created. Okay. Uh, I just want to add an extra div in here. Well, I guess it doesn't have to be extra. I just want a container. So I'm going to change this app to container just to push everything into the middle. And it should look like this, just the logo, really. And now we want to deal with our launches component. We can close server. So launches is where we actually want to make our query to GraphQL. I'm just going to minimize this a little bit. So let's uh, let's create a, a class based component. I'm, I have an extension called ES7 React GraphQL React Native Snippets. It's kind of a long name, but it's right here. And it's very helpful when you want to just generate code really quickly. So I can do RCE tab or enter and uh, it'll just generate a class based component for me. So I want to bring in a couple things up here. I want to bring in something called GQL, which is used to actually make the queries. And we want to bring this in from part of GraphQL, which is actually GraphQL dash tag. And then we also want to bring in a query component. 
So we want to pull that out of React Apollo. All right. Now, query we're going to use down here in the render, but GQL, I'm actually going to do the query or create the query up here. Okay, you could put it down here as well, but it gets kind of messy. So it's it's much cleaner to just create a variable. I'm going to call it launches underscore query. We want to set that to GQL. And the way that we do this syntax is to use backticks. Okay, and then inside the backticks is where we want to put our GraphQL query, just like we did in the graphical interface. Remember, we went like this and then we said launches. And then we can define the fields, except I'm just going to label this query launches query like that. Okay, and then we can decide the data that we want. So we want the flight number. Um, we want the mission name. We want the launch underscore date underscore local and we want the launch underscore success boolean so that's the the that's the data that i want okay i could get anything that you know we put in our server but this is all we need for for the launches component so down here um let's put in an h1 and i'm actually going to give this a class of display dash four and uh, display dash four and let's give it a class of my three, which is margin on the basically top and bottom the y axis. All right. And we're just going to say launches. Okay, if we save that, um, I mean, that should show up. Well, actually, no, it shouldn't because we haven't brought it into uh, app JS yet. So let's actually just do that real quick. So right here, I'm going to say import launches from dot slash components slash launches. And then let's just stick that right under the image like that and save. And there we go. Okay, so let's continue on here. We have our query created with GQL up here. So right underneath the H1, let's put in query and it's going to take in a prop of query and we're going to set that equal to launches query. Now inside here we want to put some JavaScript so we're going to put our uh, curly braces and we want to put an arrow function here basically so let's put in I'm going to go like that. And inside here, I'm going to use a little destructuring. This is going to give us some some stuff to work with. We're going to take out loading error and data. Okay, so it's going to give us these three things and loading is going to be a Boolean. So if it's in the process of, of fetching the data, it'll be true. And then once the data is received, it'll be false. So we can use this to put a spinner in or a loading, just loading text or whatever. And then error. If there's an error, this will give us whatever is wrong. And then the data will obviously be the data that is fetched. All right. So um, let's go in here and let's first test to see if it's loading. So I'm going to say if loading, then I want to return. I'm just going to do an H4 with the text loading like that. You could put a spinner in there. That'll make it look a little neater, um, you know, but uh, it's fine for now. And then if there's an error, then I just want to console dot log the error. OK, and then if there's neither of those, then I want to just return for now. I'm just going to do an H1 and I'll just say, I don't know, test because I, I just want to test to make sure to see if we're actually getting the data. So right above the return, I'm going to console dot log the data just to make sure it's coming in before I, I move on and display it in the UI. So let's save this and let's go back. So we see test in the browser. Let's open up our Chrome tools. 
and what's this? Okay, so this is actually expected. Um, it's giving us a, a 405 method not allowed, and it's giving us this act, no access control uh, allow origin. Basically, because we're on localhost 3000, we're trying to make a request to localhost 5000. Our server is not letting us. So what we're going to do is install something on our server called cores, which will enable us to make requests from a different domain. Um, now, before we deploy, we'll add a proxy that, uh, you know, so we don't have to use these different ports and so on. But for now, let's go to our server and install cores. So let's see, we're in the client folder down here. Remember, I still have my server running in this terminal. Okay, both both 5000 and 3000. But I'm going to go into let's see out of the client folder. So right now I'm in my server. So if you do an LS, you should see server.js and I'm going to do an npm install cores. Okay, so once we do that, this is very easy to implement. Well, for what we're doing, we can just go to uh, server.js and let's bring it in. Okay, so we want to bring in cores and then all we have to do, let's say allow cross origin. And we just need to do app dot use and then pass in cores and then some parentheses. All right, so we'll save that and let's go back. Reload and there we go. So now we're not getting that error anymore. We're getting launches, which is an array of 90 objects. So if we take a look at the first one, flight number one, we get the date, we get the success and we get the mission name. So notice we're only getting the stuff that we requested from our launches component. So this stuff right here. Okay, so that's what's great about GraphQL again is you can just get what you want. So now that we know we're getting that, let's get rid of the console log data and we want to display this. Okay, we actually we need to loop through it or map through it and display each launch. Now I'm actually going to have a separate component for each launch called launch item. So in components, let's create a new file called launch item .js. OK, and then what we'll do is we'll bring this in up here. Import launch item from and it's dot slash uh, launch item. OK, now we have to loop through or better yet map through the launches and we can do that with this data variable that we have. So I'm going to in this return. Uh, let's see, should we use you know what? I'm going to use a fragment here. We don't need a div, so we could do like react dot fragment. Um, but what I'm going to do is just bring in fragment up here and then we can just say fragment and fragment is just kind of like a, like a dummy dom element it's not going to actually show up in the in the dom in the browser but we can use it to wrap our stuff like this now we want to loop through the data or, or map through the data and then output the launch item component okay we want to pass the data into that launch item component so this return right here let's get rid of this h1 and let's make this a fragment and inside here uh, let's see we're gonna put in our curly braces here and we're gonna take data dot launches because remember inside data which we get here from our query there's an array of launches and we want to map through this and we want to let's call each one launch. We'll use an arrow function here. And for each launch, we want to render a launch item component. So launch item. And then this is going to take in a key. So for the key, we're going to use, let's say, launch dot uh, flight number. OK, your key should always be a unique value, obviously. And then the data itself we're going to put inside launch. 
Okay, so we're just passing in each launch into the launch item component for displaying. So let's head over to launch item and we're going to use a functional component here, not a class. So I'm going to do RCF tab. Oops. I don't know why it does that sometimes. What the heck? RCF tab. There we go. So uh, in this in this component, like I said, it's it's just used for displaying the launch that's passed into it. So let's, let's see how do I want to do this. Um, let's let's create. Well, let's just check props because this is how props are passed in and then we'll go ahead and console dot log and I want to check props dot launch. For the return, I'm just going to say test and we're going to save this and go back to the browser. And now you'll see that it just renders test over here. But in the console, it's it's logging each launch that we passed in. So we know that we're getting that data, okay, which is good. Now, instead of having to say props dot launch, what I'm going to do is just use a little destructuring in here. So we want curly braces and then we're going to say launch some other curly braces and then just create variables from here like flight number and mission name launch date local and launch success. Okay, so now we should be able to just use those variables. Now in the return I'm going to use I'm going to style this with bootstrap. So I'm going to say return. Uh, let's do div with the class name. Of, let's do a cards. We use bootstrap cards. So we want card and card body. And let's do a margin bottom three just to push them down. And inside here, I'm actually going to use the bootstrap grid. So I'm going to put a row. And let's do a nine column. So we'll do call dash MD dash nine. And then let's do a three column. So call dash MD dash three. And on the nine column, we want to put an H4. And let's say mission. And then we want the name of the mission so we can simply get that with mission name which we brought in from up here that was passed in through props. Now, as far as the color code, I'm not going to do that yet. We're going to do that probably in the next video, but I just want to get the, the basic data here. So we have the mission name. Let's do the date. So underneath that, we'll put a paragraph and we'll say date and we'll do our launch date local. I'm going to use uh, something called moment later on to format the data a little nicer. But for now, like I said, we just want to get this displayed and then I'm going to have a uh, we're going to have a button to an, to the launch page here. Now we haven't installed react router yet. So for now, I'm just going to put a button. Uh, of course, when we use the router, we'll have to use link. But just to, just for looks, I guess right now we'll do button class name is going to be BTN BTN. Uh, secondary and let's just say uh, details when I say uh, launch details. OK, so let's save this and see if this actually renders and it does good. All right, so I think this is a good place to stop. We did quite a bit here. We, of course, installed React and, and concurrently got the servers running together. We uh, integrated Apollo. The Apollo client, the Apollo provider, we created our first query to get the launches. We rendered out all the data from that query. So we did quite a bit in this video. Uh, and I know these videos are kind of long. Some some creators will do, you know, five, 10 minute videos. I like to keep to make them a little longer. Um, I don't know. It's just it's just my style. I don't want to have 20, 30 videos in one series. So hopefully that's OK. So in the next video, we're going to do a few things. We want to make, you know, the red and green if they're if they're successful or not. We also want to implement to react router version four and um, we want to create our launch page. OK, with with some extra details. So that's it, guys. I will see you in the next video.